Hi guys, it's Nico, and this is the Automation Gym. Today, we're going to be looking at the virtual HCP inputs, what are they, and how to use them. Without further ado, let's jump into config. So, first of all, where can we find them? Well, if you go to the mini server, virtual inputs, at the top, you're gonna to be able to see virtual HCP inputs. Click on them, and we want to create one. It's going to be our virtual HTTP input. I'm going to change its name a bit, and I'll show you why. We have just a few properties that we want to adjust. One of them is the URL, where we're going to be pulling information from. Pulling cycle is how frequently we're going to be pulling information. And then a timeout is if we get nothing in response, how long should we wait before we uh, tell the user, hey, we're not pulling any information. So if we go online, we can just simply Google free API with no authentication. There is a way to pull APIs with authentication, but I'm going to show you that in a different video just because it's a bit more advanced. And if you just type that one in Google, then you'll see a big list of free open public APIs that require no key or no authentication. Now, what we're going to be looking at today so you can pull any data that is open, available with or without a key. Um, but the data we're going to be pulling is simply going to be an integer or it's going to be a number. We cannot unfortunately pull text at this time. Um, so let's focus on what we can do. Now, what I'm going to be pulling is something that I love to talk about is going to be cryptocurrencies. And more specifically, we're going to be pulling the price of Bitcoin today in the real time. And why am I doing that? First of all, I want to have it in my logs on app and I want to be able to see it. And second of all, once I have that information, I can do quite a lot of custom logic. So for example, when I wake up in the morning, if the price is above 30,000 pounds, open a champagne, start your nice morning playlist, do something. Or if the uh, price is, I don't know, under 20,000 pounds, just go in the toilet, cry for 20 minutes and then go to work. So. Completely up to you what you want to do, but in my case, we'll just go to one of these endpoints. So you can see these are different APIs or different websites uh, that do publish the information online. And I'll give you just a few examples. So if we look at Coindesk, whenever you go to that URL, it's going to spit a JSON file back with the current prices and it's going to give me the price of Bitcoin against the pound, against the euro and against the US dollar. And basically this is what you can expect. We can pull different types of information. You can pull weather information. You can pull information about events that are going to be nearby. Um, you can pull information about precipitation and much more. But in our case, we're just going to do something a bit more interesting. So Coindesk, in this case, too much data, I don't need that. And second of all, I might want a little bit more or maybe I'm gonna be looking at the volume traded for the day. So let's close this one and look at it something better. Now we're going to be focusing on CoinGecko, which again is gonna be a similar procedure, but what I like is that they have a very nice user interface where we can test things out and see if it actually works before we even go to the mini server. Now in here, you'll be able to see that this is a free public API with no key, which is great, exactly what we need. And the public API has a limit of 10 to 30 calls a minute, which means that every single minute we can only pull 10 or 30 times. And this is where that pulling cycle comes into play. If the pulling cycle is currently set 10 seconds and that is the lowest that it can go in the mini server, that means that every minute we're gonna be able to pull information six times so in this case, we're absolutely safe. However, if we were to pull information more frequently uh, or this API has a higher limit, then we'll probably reduce it 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, whatever it is. We don't need to pull information every 10 seconds anyway, so I should be fine. Now, how can we test it and how can we play with this interface? So for example, what we're looking to get is going to be the simple price and you can see there are a few commands or a few endpoints that we can get, go to, to look at contracts, categories, and so on. But in our case, we're going to be looking at the simple one. So click on it. It's going to require an ID. So we can try it out in real time. 
the ID is going to be obviously Bitcoin. The currency is going to be GBP for a great British pound. And then we execute the command. What this is going to do is going to build the request string, which we're going to need, and it's going to regurgitate some information back. To show you that this is actually working, we can simply copy that URL. We can paste it in a new page, enter, and voila. That is the information that it comes back with. Current price of, the, of Bitcoin versus the British pound, 22,000 pounds and 66, well, 22,066 pounds. So how do we get that information in config and what do we do with it? Well, we can grab that same URL that we used in here. We can go to the mini server and our virtual HTTP input. Now this virtual HTTP input is going to be coin geckos API and we can call it BTC GBP, for example, if you want to be more specific. Then we drop the URL that we used in here. And now to actually pull specific piece of information. So in our case, we're looking for the price only. We don't need a whole string. You click on your virtual HTTP input and we are going to create a virtual HTTP input command, which is going to be BTC GBP price. And then in here, in the field that is currently grayed out or in pink, you have the three dots, click on them and you can see, there we go. In this window, it's going to pull information. It's going to show us exactly what we've seen in the web browser. Now, if you go and hover your mouse on top of the question mark, you can see how it can pass to that data. So for example, we want to skip absolutely everything else and we just want to get that integer. We just want to get that 22,057 pounds. And if you look further down in the text, you'll be able to see that there are special characters that we can use or there are special commands that we can use. So for example, backslash I, the text that we're going to skip and uh, or the text that we're going to jump to. And then backslash I again is going to give us that information. So if we try it, backslash I, then you can see GBP, for example, is unique copy it exactly the same way as it is written down in the API, backslash I. And then if you want to get the value, we can simply go again, backslash V. And there it goes, automatically pulls that data because it's looking at the value after GBP and that column. What you can also do, I mean, it does not need to be just this piece of text. It can also be that as well. As long as it's unique and it does not repeat in that piece of text, even just the P onwards is going to be enough. And you can also see that data is now 22,066.0. Now, if you want to remove that dot zero, it's super easy to do. So click on apply in here so we can save our command. And you see the command is now saved in here. And then under units, if we just remove that dot one and just keep it as V, if you go back to our command recognition, you'll be able to see that now the value after the correction is 22,057, which is perfect. And if you want to add a final touch, if we simply put the pound symbol either on the front as it is in the UK or in the back as it is everywhere else, save it in, go to that command again, and now you can see that is 22,076 pounds. So apply it, drag it on the page, save in a mini server. In a few seconds, well, a few seconds or 10 seconds, we'll be able to see, there it is, there's our price. Now, what can we do with our information? As I told you earlier, we can do absolutely anything. So for example, if I grab a status block, I can connect it in. And we can say, if the price of Bitcoin is higher than 30,000, we can maybe send a text, our party, and 
if the price of Bitcoin is less or equal than, let's say, 20,000 pounds, you can simply say, sit in the shower and cry. There we go. Awesome. Say OK. Save in the mini server again. And let's see what we can do with our information. So there's a price coming in. It is currently above 22,000 pounds. Oh, but we actually missed one thing. So if it is, more than 20,000 pounds and it is less or equal to 29,999. We just chill, we do nothing. Say okay, save it again. And there we go. Because it's between 20 and 30,000 pounds, we just chill. And now, as you can imagine, if I simply put some state values in here, let's say one, two, three, I'll save it again. It's also going to output that value whenever the uh, price refreshes. And then with that value, I can do anything I want in config. So for example, I can switch the lights onto a green scene in the morning. I can um, send a text to speech message. I can make the garage door open or anything else that comes to mind. So that was a very, very brief introduction to the virtual HTTP input. Let me know if you have any questions down in comments and what you'd like to see next. Up till next time. See you guys. Cheers.